This is a 1984 Nissan Patrol, and it's the lesser known Japanese off-roader SUV. Everybody knows the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Mitsubishi Montero get some interest, but the Patrol was Nissan's rival to those, and it doesn't really get that much recognition. Today, I'm going to review the Patrol and show you all of its quirks and features, and show you what you're missing. Before I get started, big news, this Nissan Patrol is currently for sale, being auctioned live on cars and bids. This Patrol has four-wheel drive, a manual transmission, and some cool upgrades and enhancements, and it's offered with no reserve. So, once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description below to head over to the live auction for this Nissan Patrol, where you can bid on it and buy it only on cars and bids. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Nissan Patrol with a quick overview of exactly what the Patrol is, because I suspect this is going to be a little unfamiliar to most of my North American viewers. Like I said, this was Nissan's rival to the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Mitsubishi Montero, which were popular 70s, 80s, 90s Japanese SUVs. I suspect the reason that most Americans don't know the Patrol is it was never sold in North America. Even to this day, Nissan still doesn't offer for a vehicle called the Patrol in the North American market. Throughout the 80s and 90s, we had the Nissan Pathfinder, and these days we have the Nissan Patrol, but it's sold as the Armada. So the Patrol brand name just isn't really that well known here in the States. But there are many similarities to the Land Cruisers, the Monteros, the Defenders, the Broncos, other off-roader SUVs, including four-wheel drive, of course. This vehicle has it, and it also has a two-speed transfer case, so high-range and low-range four-wheel drive for added capabilities. This particular patrol also has a manual transmission, which adds mechanical simplicity and was kind of common in SUVs in the 70s and 80s. Definitely an old school feature. Now, another thing to note about the patrol is it has kind of a similar trajectory to similar SUVs, including the Toyota Land Cruiser. Like the Land Cruiser, the patrol was first revealed in the early 1950s as kind of a military Jeep. It looked like one, it was intended to resemble one and do the same things as one, and and also, like the Land Cruiser, it evolved after that to become more useful, more practical for a wider range of purposes and offer more body styles and have civilian appeal. This particular patrol is a third generation model and it was sold throughout the 1980s, basically 1980 through 1989. And it was offered in several body styles. You could get a two-door SUV, a four-door SUV like this one, a two-door pickup truck, or a Nissan Patrol fire truck, which was all also similar to the Land Cruiser. There are a lot of Land Cruiser fire trucks out there, but you could also get a patrol. So let's talk through the quirks and features, one of which you'll immediately notice this patrol is right-hand drive. Pretty common since a lot of these were sold new in Japan, Australia. This one came from South Africa, which is also a right-hand drive market. And so the steering wheel is over here on the wrong side for North America. And speaking of that steering wheel, one interesting thing about it is the horn situation. You have a horn button in the middle. You can see Nissan with a horn. You press that in it honks, but you also have horn buttons on the left side, over on the right side, and below. So you have four separate horn buttons on this steering wheel. I'm not exactly sure how many people were honking in South Africa in the 1980s, but I guess that was an important component. Now, also in this car, you can clearly tell that it's set up for off-roading. Like I said, four-wheel drive with a two-speed transfer case, high and low gear, but you also have this grab handle, which the passenger was intended to grab onto in scary off-road situations so they didn't go flying. One other cool off-roading feature in here is in the center where you have the inclinometer, which tells you your pitch and roll at any given moment. A lot of Japanese SUVs had one of these in this period, although I think that this one is aftermarket based on the images that it shows. That's not exactly a patrol. It's far less generic of an image you'd expect from the factory, but you do have that on there, which is a nice aftermarket touch. Also a nice aftermarket touch in here is the center console, which isn't intended to be here. In fact, you can pull it right out, but it's nice to have a little storage area in here and some cup 
cup holders because this car didn't come like that from the factory. A very basic old school SUV. Also worth pointing out up here, one other nice feature. This has air conditioning, or at least it would have from the factory. It's not currently set up in this patrol, but AC in a vehicle like this would have been a nice comfort feature to have in an otherwise rough and tumble off-roader. And next up, we move into the back seat, where you won't find anything particularly exciting or unusual or interesting at all, except that rear seat room is actually kind of tight. Sitting back here, my knees are right up against the seat. Feels a little tight in here, and that's because this patrol has three row seating. There's a third row in back. This is a common feature now in SUVs, but it was tremendously uncommon in SUVs from this era. The Land Cruiser didn't have it, the Montero, I can't think of any that did. Vans are offered three row sitting at this time, but not SUVs. And that would have added some real practicality and a big differentiation point for the patrol. The reason the second row is a little tight is because they had to move it forward a bit in order to accommodate the space for the third row. Now, in order to get into the third row, you can only do it from the passenger side, which of course is the driver side here in America. It makes things a little bit dangerous, but there's this little latch here. You pull it and then the second row seat goes forward and that gives you access to your third row in the patrol, which was a really nice feature to have. And worth pointing out that when you climb into the third row, again, not particularly interesting or exciting, but there is an ashtray mounted on the back of the second row so that third row passengers could smoke. Because in the 80s, you didn't want to deprive anybody of the ability to smoke. Interesting, though, to see three rows seating in this vehicle add some practicality to a cool old school SUV. And next up, we move on to the cargo area, starting with accessing the cargo area, which is pretty simple. There's a little keyhole button back here. You push it, pop open the rear window so you can put stuff in without opening the entire tailgate. But if you have larger items or want a lower load floor, you just open up the tailgate and then you're in. From here you can see the cargo area and there's actually some decent space behind the third row, which is unusual even in modern three row vehicles. Usually it's pretty small and here it's not huge, but it's there. So three rows of passengers and space behind. Also worth pointing out this third row can be folded if you want even more space or removed entirely if you don't really need it and you just want a large cargo area. And next up, we move under the hood in the patrol. These were offered with several different engines that you could choose from. This particular example has a 2.8 liter gasoline six cylinder, which was very similar to the engine used in the Datsun Z from this era. The difference was the Z got a fuel injected version. This is a carbureted version, but otherwise same size and a lot of similarities. Interestingly, not that much power, 120 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque, give or take. And of course that was back when this was new. 40 years ago, but that's the powertrain in this patrol. And finally, I want to talk about some of the off-road upgrades to this particular patrol that seem to make it more capable off the pavement or at least look cooler. Starting with this roof rack, you can stick stuff up there. Very fitting with the boxy design of this. Go anywhere and take your stuff with you. You also have a snorkel, as you can see, which allows the engine to breathe even as you're fording water. To me, this looks like it's from a later Nissan patrol because the patrol font seems to come from a later model, but either way, a patrol branded snorkel in this car. You also have all-terrain tires for better grip off the pavement and these cool auxiliary lights, which can illuminate the world when you're off-roading, all adds up to a more capable patrol. I also like the giant Nissan badge going across the grill in front. Toyota is known for this, especially in North America, just writing out Toyota in big letters, but Toyota apparently wasn't the only one who did it. Nissan did it too, and it looks just as cool and just as utilitarian. All right, driving the Nissan Patrol. And a quick thank you to Garage Collective for allowing me this space to film. It's like a cool San Diego car member community and car storage facility. You can check out Garage Collective by clicking the link in the description below. So thank you to Garage Collective. But let's talk patrol. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, the interesting thing about the Patrol is, like I said, not really all that well known here in the States, but very similar to a lot of vehicles that are beloved here in the States. You have Mitsubishi Montero. I mean, I think this looks a lot like a Mitsubishi Montero, uh, especially in four-door form. A two-door Patrol looks a lot like a 70 Series Toyota Land Cruiser. They're very similar vehicles, too. I mean, boxy four-wheel drive, similar powertrains, similar time frames. It's all about the same. It's just that the Patrol isn't quite as well known. So, driving the Patrol, you can clearly tell very quickly that this is also very similar to Montero, Land Cruiser, etc. when you're out on the road. You have 
Um, it's very similar driving feel, driving position, the boxy, the plastic in the interior, it's all really similar. Um, and you have a similar sort of powertrain. You have a gasoline six-cylinder engine. Um, it's kind of an eager little engine, very connected to the pedal. Like you press it, it, it revs very loudly and quickly, um, but obviously doesn't do a great job of moving this vehicle uh, since it's not very powerful. And this is a relatively large car. Still, you know, you get what you expect, basically, is how I would describe the powertrain. Um, it's honest, it's simple, it's basic, and that's that. Really, it does just feel like a lot of other uh, 80s, particularly Japanese SUVs. I just drove a K5 Blazer, and this definitely feels smaller and more maneuverable than that. It doesn't have the kind of boss, too big, too aggressive feel that kind of my Defender has. It just sort of would have fit into Japan, Australia, South Africa, the brush, the bush, uh, in that era, and it would have been fine, and it would have gone then and worked well. Truthfully, there's not all that much that's interesting or surprising or different about this vehicle. You have a slow powertrain, but one that's, like I said, eager and honest. You press the pedal, it does what you expect. Um, clutch and shifter are quite easy, quite simple to use, nothing unusual there. Uh, clutch is not vague, it's not too heavy. Shifter is easy to put into gear. It's all very simple stuff. Sizing is pretty good. Um, you're not dealing with a massive vehicle that's gonna be annoying or difficult to operate. It's a fairly usable, fairly easy uh, SUV to drive. Really, I think what I would say about the Patrol is there's no real surprises, except for the surprise of the vehicle itself. You know, if you don't know about this, if you don't know that Nissan also had like a Montero Land Cruiser type vehicle, that's the real surprise. This thing looks cool. I imagine it functions pretty well off-road, but in terms of driving it around, it's a surprisingly drivable vehicle. And if you want something that's kind of head-turning, kind of interesting and cool, this is that. Not a lot of people know what it is, but it's easy to drive. It's a fun little SUV. And and you can take it off the pavement and kind of be the only one out there in a patrol. And so that's the 1984 Nissan Patrol, the forgotten old school Japanese SUV. These are more quirky and more obscure than a Toyota Land Cruiser, and you'll certainly stand out on the trails if you have a patrol, and you can buy this one on cars and bids. Anyway, now it's time to give the patrol a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 38 out of 100, which places this Patrol here against other sort of similar SUVs, though I haven't really reviewed anything quite like this. The Patrol is cool, a neat old school SUV that's capable and surprisingly practical thanks to three row seating, but it's also relatively obscure, so it won't turn as many heads as a nice old Land Cruiser or a Bronco. Still, it's a neat car and it's interesting to see what America never got.